Got a really scary error the other day when I ran out to cars and coffee. So I wanted to make a quick video to show you guys how I fixed it. And be sure to stay tuned until the end of the episode when I do a little retrospective on why I think this might have happened. All right, well, I got this on the way to cars and coffee this morning. So uh, I'll try to figure out what's going on here. Axle differential lock. So when I turned the car back on, that uh, malfunction was still showing up, and I just started driving away at a slow speed, and it went away on its own. Uh, I just got home, turned off the car, and we get this. All right, I got ISTA connecting and reading fault codes here. I googled online, people say the GHAS module sometimes has something to do with it. It's a rough road detection, no wheel speed signal received. My current mileage is 38,034. So that's kilometers. So we got some wheel speed sensor stuff and I read that this is often caused by faulty wheel speed sensors. Drive off recognition, right rear, regulated diff lock, DSC function not available. So yeah. Okay, so right around here is probably when I switched out my winter wheels with my summer wheels. And I had to reset the TPMS stuff because obviously there were different ones in there. And maybe this is when stuff started going a little wonky. So when I hit calculate test plan, let's see what they tell me to do. We got a differential lock. Okay, regulated differential lock. That's the GHAS thing, is a demand regulated rear axle diff lock. Allows the switch slip between the right and left rear wheel to reduce both wheels, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so that's what it does. It's got some sensors. This is the control unit in front of the battery. So there's a rotor position sensor. And they give you a little baby wiring diagram. Okay, possibly a right rear wheel speed sensor. Wheel circumferential velocity is calculated from the sensor.
so because I have these stop ticks on my brake pad wear sensor is just zip tied up here. So I'm assuming that this cable that goes down right here behind my rotor is the wheel speed sensor and following it around came up to the middle cable here in this little box so I just squeezed that little thing at the top up there and pulled these apart just to inspect it and there's no obvious signs of wear or anything but I guess I'll disconnect it and take a look at it over here so this is just held on with a t27 this out so it's pretty goopy but I assume that's kind of normal so I'm clean this thing off okay I'm gonna take a trip under here to inspect the diff and uh, here's a wire down along the side actually seems really taut against the corner here I guess that's supposed to be like that but looking at the diff everything looks fine to me no obvious signs of damage or leaks or anything like that. Hmm. So it's very hard. <clears throat> to pull that one back and forth. Whereas on the left side, it seems really loose and easy. Oh, well, I'm down here. Look, there is a cable that is completely disconnected. And I think that is actually, this might be the speed sensor. This is one of the other sensors that's down here. But I'm pretty sure that should be plugged in. Put this back in. Oh my goodness, look at this. She even brings me lunch while under the car. What a good wife. All right guys, tell me what sensor is this that I just took out and compared to this sensor back here. This is the one that was unplugged on the left driver's side. All right, I just went ahead and hit the uh, delete default memory. So it switched everything off. It's deleting everything. And we'll try again with that sensor plugged back in. Look at all the pretty green boxes now. Okay, I'll start with the g -Hoss again. Okay, no communication possible with vertical dynamics management. No wheel speed, signal received. Drive off recognition, right rear. So the good news is it sounds like this is all uh, electrical related instead of mechanical. So I'm going to go back to the test plan for this wheel speed sensor. Let me go to the wheel speed sensor one. Driving off on a surface with low coefficient of friction. So that's what it felt like. It felt like it thought I was driving off on ice and it started kicking in my ABS, but that was not the case. It installed, head damage or soiled. So I cleaned the head, I think. Pulse generator line plug connection. So yeah, that thing that I pulled out was the wheel speed sensor. At least it was number three and four. Our 
Okay, yeah, so that's the one for the rear axle. So this other one is the steering angle sensor, I guess. It's, oh, well that one has been discontinued. The steering angle, angle is now determined by the rotor position sensor of the electromagnetic power steering. sensor we know is not an issue. The AC control unit must be encoded to the solenoid valve calibrated and the solenoid valves calibrated. inspection. I didn't see anything. Currently present. Replace the following component. The wheel speed sensor rear right. Alright, that's the code. So, I guess I'm going to try to replace that. Alright guys, it is a few days later. I finally got the part in, so we're going to try it out and see if it works. Here is the part number. It was about 60 bucks. Uh, when I asked the dealership, it was about 200 and some dollars. So since this video has gone from diagnostic to changing this wire out, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So obviously take the wheel off so you can get access to this stuff. First step is this little panel. It's got a plastic 10 millimeter nut. After removing the nut, there's a little plastic piece that pushes in to help you separate the cover from this uh, back plastic piece. And just pull it out and slide these off. Now you can see this back here and you can reach your hand in and it's just got two little plastic clips that are holding this shut. So just uh, reach in there and pop these little two plastic clips and this will open. So when you get in the panel, it is the one on the far left, at least for the right side wheel. And you can just pull it out to disconnect it. And there's a little tab on the top. Press that in to release it. And it separates. And you can just follow it down through here. So if we follow this wire under the car, you'll see this little white plastic piece here. Here it is, you can see there's a little tab that you can just lift up, pull this bottom piece out, and you can pull our cord out. So right behind the spring is another one. It's the same way, gently lift that off and detach it from there. And then there is a little clip on the side. Just knock that loose. Now back from the top, just detach it this last point so then the bolt is held on by a t27 and we'll take our sensor back out that we had cleaned off and yank it out so here's the one that they sent me that i'm going to be putting back in and it looks kind of dirty almost like i got a refurbished one or something I always like to do a comparison of old versus new just to make sure all the parts line up. They're the same length and identical, which they are. So now I'm just going to reinstall the new one. Drop it in, put our bolt back. Then just line it back up with all of the places where it was clipped in. So you can see that it is secured on the black plastic itself between these two thicker rubber bumper things. All right, you guys get it. Reconnect the white things, reconnect it back in here, slide it into your box, close everything back up. When you refit the cover, the dirt will probably guide you. Let's kind of push that back in, guide the plastic back underneath. Let's 
get everybody lined back up. This little pin comes through here. Put your five millimeter back on. That's all there is to replacing the wheel speed sensor. But the big question is whether or not this solved my problem. So let me put the wheel back on and we'll take it out for a test drive. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna start her up. Now I know it's gonna show me that warning as soon as I start the car, but we'll see if it goes away afterwards. down the cul-de-sac. What's this? Morning gone. Excellent sign. All systems okay. All right, let me drive it around a little bit. Okay, I am back, still okay. Let's just say I just went on a really spirited run, had a lot of fun, no more issues. So thank goodness nothing else is wrong. All right, moral of this story, if you guys do not have Ista Plus, get it. Use this link right here, go download it. You can get it for free and it is amazing and life-saving. If this video helped you out, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and even consider becoming a member. If you would like your business or product to be displayed in every single one of my videos, consider becoming a diamond donor. Special shout out again to Rio Toro, riotoro.com. If you want some uh, really cool earbuds, they got headphones, keyboards, PC builds, a lot of that kind of stuff. Thanks so much for their support. So for my retrospective, I'm trying to think of what could have caused this specifically, and I really can't think of anything. The last thing I did before this happened was I switched my winter wheels over to my summer wheels. So I thought the problem was uh, like a slight difference in the diameter because of the wheels and the tires were causing an issue and it just needed to be recalibrated by the system. But uh, it seems like that was not the case. It seems like Ista Plus came through and told me exactly what the problem was. So changing out one quick wire and waiting a few days for the part to get here seems to have done the trick. So I'm gonna put a link in the description below to that where you can get the part if that's the issue that you are facing. And also you'll see a link down there if you want to buy me a beer or if you wanna buy one of the shirts for the channel and help support the channel financially, that is always much appreciated. So I will look forward to seeing you guys next Friday at noon. Take care.